I mean, for for people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes. Okay. Magical. <laughs> yes, this is running. This is running. Oh, this. Okay, so uh, those who have the flash disk uh, copy just the avocado directory. Yeah, the rest is just live image. I do that with all my flash disks because you don't know when you need it. Or alternatively, I didn't know how many people would be there, so you can use these Ethernet cables to download it or, or just download the short uh, the directory without the big uh, from, from Wi Fi. It should be also working. Uh, I don't want to download the big data because it's. Uh, it's really big and it's just, oh, it, it's 100 megabytes and if you do that all uh, at once, the Wi-Fi will probably fail, so, that's why. Yeah, okay. So I, I guess we can start. Uh, hello, my name is Lukáš Doktor and uh, we're here to uh, play with Avocado. Uh, Avocado is this, this small thing in here, uh, which is also a present for the one who who's finds the most interesting bugs uh, during this workshop. Uh, you may have seen the presentation, uh, which was like two hours ago. I, can I ask uh, who was not at the presentation? Okay, uh, I'll go through the basics very briefly, but this is a workshop. I, I would like to have it practical. So after some short introduction and, uh, and basic usage of our avocado, you may have seen, uh, seen at the presentation, we will go deeper and we will see the failure or maybe, maybe it, it will work perfectly, but we will see. Uh, so first about me, uh, yeah, uh, those who came later, uh, there is a flash disk somewhere. Uh, you can find uh, the Git repository there. And you can find a couple of other other stuff, and uh, most importantly, uh, image of uh, JOS, which is used for the word uh, avocado word. Oh, it's broken. No, it's not broken. Yes. Um, 
the image will, will be used in Avocado Verde and you'll find a Docker uh, container which will be used to uh, show you something interesting uh, which is not yet supported but may work. Yes, it's the 7 version. Like, uh, overall, it, it has only 700 megabytes, so yeah, it's, it's not that bad. Yeah, not 10, it's, it's like, yeah, it's, not it's, it's not 10, it's, it's just a couple of, couple of I think it's, it's 800 itself only, like, like the basic right, version. Right, right. Okay, so about me, uh, why am I talking to you? Uh, so I have some experience with, uh, with Bash, I started on RHTS. Uh, in, in Red Hat, uh, then I moved to virtualization and we use uh, autotest, uh, later simplified it and, and used the word test. Uh, I, I used both sides, like the tests and, and the framework, and recently I moved to Avocado. avocado. Uh, what is Avocado? You heard on, on the presentation, you can read from the slides. Uh, it's pretty new, new framework for, for testing. But for me, what is avocado for me? Because uh, everybody can uh, can have different opinions. Uh, for me, it's 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 just a program which stores results of anything I want to execute, anything what I want to do. It, what I just manually uh, with the manual integration I, I just did, uh, it stores the results in 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 some format. It help it, and it also allows me to share these results with others uh, on a central central database. Uh, it's also a binary which helps me to execute the same thing, the same steps defined in the test uh, under various environments. Uh, additionally, it, it's also a, just just a set of libraries you can use. Not just uh, forget about the framework and just use the libraries to. Uh, to run your, your scripts to help you write easier to tests. It's something that integrates with Jenkins pretty, pretty seamlessly. And uh, it's a tool for sharing the results, as I told you already. And most importantly, it, it can do all kinds of variants and run the same, th same thing uh, under different, uh, different environments. Uh, so, the like first course core program you're gonna see it's it's a Python script, uh, which is the Avocado Runner. So how how does it work? We have the user. You, you saw it on the presentation. So so in, in a in brief, just briefly, we have a user. Uh, the user executes whatever he wants: tests, binary, or or some set of set of tests. Uh, the Avocado Runner takes over the control. It. Uh, does some magic before, after, it, it grabs some result and uh, presents the result data to you in, in various formats, uh, which, whichever you prefer. Uh, also, we don't want to just be used by uh, quality assurance uh, guys. We, we would like to involve developers more. So we, for example, allow uh, transparently just uh, run the exact same test and say, okay, I want to run it inside the GDB because something failed and I want to get deeper understanding you know, what, what's happening there. Or I want to run a trace or perf. Uh, and we additionally we provide some API to uh, do that automatically, but you can do that manually from the command line, just switching from, uh, from one, one tool to the another, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, so that, that will be the basic interaction what Avocado is. I, uh, do you have any question about what, what Avocado is? Like, is anybody completely lost here? No, so I think we can go m more practical and, and see how does it work. So you saw some of these examples already. Uh, so yeah, those who were not on the presentation, this is how we run, run a test inside Avocado. So you can see that there is there is this runner. I, uh, this is a workshop. This is not a presentation. I mean, I, I'm not using the installed version. You can do that. I'm not using it uh, because we're gonna play with it. We're gonna probably even code something in here. Uh, 
so I'm using the Git version you, you all have uh, from the uh, flash disk. Which or you, file? I'm sorry? Which file is it? Uh, there are th three tarred uh, repositories. Just untar them all into one, one directory. Okay. Uh, you, you're going to end up with uh, avocado uh, directory, then avocado uh, whatever directory, and avocado web directory. Okay, yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, I already have a net commander. Uh, yes. li like this, yeah? That is a structure that you will get when you get the flash drive. Just untar it, and uh, you're gonna see something like this. Maybe I forgot to mention uh, there is Lucas, so Miguel Ruiz, uh, and Ademar Rice. These are also from, oh, <laughs> from Ademar's team. And uh, if you have any problems uh, which are not critical and we can resume, so just you know, feel free to ask and they, they can help you. Or we can uh, pause the, present the workshop and, uh, and help you set the environment. So everybody is, is ready? Or? So when you go into the avocado directory, uh, it, it has some, it, it has pretty much defined structure. Most of it is upstream. Uh, now, uh, when you when you see in in, in a directory scripts, there is there is uh, avocado uh, Python script, which does the, does the job, and one of its commands is run, and I just run through, which which works. So let's let's add something else. There, oh there, and well, it it works again. Uh, I mean. True is passing, fail is failing. Uh, what could it be, right? We, we're using just the written code to see see the difference. Uh, the, like everybody can do this. Everybody can check check the result written code. So avocado is not just just this runner. We can we have yes. Yes, uh, Pista, yeah, it's, it's uh, not, uh, it's optional. Yeah, it's Pistache, how important is that? Yeah. This, uh, this Java install Python dash Pistache. Well, it's not, it's not, pro, it's not necessarily. It's not super important, but it's closer for the HTML report. Yes. Uh, so it's important to have the Yes, you can find the packages if the internet is not working. You can find the packages for Fedora 20 in, in, on that flash disk too. Uh, this is not critical because it's it's just for a plugin, so uh, you can proceed without without it. Uh, anyway, we have uh, we have uh, some API for for Python scripts, so I can run a couple of uh, other tests. These are taken from uh, from the main repository uh, which I have set up so I can run them uh, just by, by the call name and you can see there are a couple of different results here and uh, like more, more is coming uh, so let's, let's just have a look at what's actually the runner about so you can see it has a couple of subcommands, and then then uh, then you have uh, uh, options for them. Uh, you can run run something. You can see what plugins are currently en en enabled. You can see uh, what config is currently used. Uh, you can see some sysinfo. You can uh, you can do a bunch of other stuff. We will get to them in deeply later. Um, let me show you just the runner, what, what, what the runner supports. You can see we have a bunch of uh, commands or, or arguments already. You don't need to take care of everything. The important thing I, I would like to show you here is, for example, there are optional arguments. There you have uh, output related arguments, multiple arguments. These are not the core, uh, core part of Avocado. These are, let's say, plugins because we're using plugin systems to extend the features of Avocado. Uh, you don't need all of them. For example, you don't need GNU debugger if, if, you, if you run it always without it. 
uh, and you can define your your own plugins uh, for sub supporting like uh, your custom custom modules. Yeah, maybe uh, those who are interested can take a look into the docs. Uh, we update them uh, together with the code. So it's in the same code base uh, in the dictionary. And uh, like you can find a lot of information there. Uh, if you don't know how any feature works, we also have self-tests, even functional self-tests. So you can, you can see in the self-test directory and see how, how the feature is used. Uh, because it's being tested somewhere, right? Uh, but let's go to uh, to some features, maybe, if I'm correctly. Yes, documentation there. Uh, so what Avocado supports? What are the core features we, we added to help you testing? One of them is comparing output. You can see here, I'm going to execute some tests. How does it look like? You're probably wondering. Um, what it does, it, it basically just prints something to standard output and something else to standard error. Uh, and it returns zero, so it, it passes. So now let me just say that this is what I want. This is the output uh, I'm expecting for all future runs. So I set minus minus output check record all. And voila. It passes again. Nothing, nothing, nothing changed. I can run it again. You don't see any differences. So let me see. I do yum, in, yum update. And for example, someone breaks uh, writing to standard output and instead goes to uh, standard error and, and instead goes to standard output. We can run it and the test starts failing. This is because we saw lots of implementations of these simple tests, you know. So why to implement it inside a test? You can you, you can have it from the framework. Uh, let me just uh, show you uh, the job log. Uh, you can see I executed the, instead of just grabbing the result, I just executed it again. You can see that we were yeah, uh, executing. Yes, there. This is the output. And there is the exception. And you can see that the actual test standard output is different than we expected. Because we have in standard output, we have standard output and standard error. And we expected just standard error. Uh, the same, actually the standard error changed too. We were expecting something else than, than what's there. Uh, if you discover that this is the, the expected behavior from now on, you can again just record the results and use it, use it like this. And it's, uh, it starts working again. So no, no need to implement this in, 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 in your code. You can also specify just standard output, standard input, standard output or standard error instead of both of them. Any questions so far? Like uh, I'm going through this really quickly because this is not the interesting part. Like the interesting part is coming. Uh, any core fe uh, another core feature of Avocado is that you can execute uh, binary and parse the results through Wapper. Yeah, uh, this one is really nice. Uh, the basic idea behind it is completely different than what you see here, and. Um, you're going to get in deep how it works uh, later in the presentation. This is another def uh, demonstration how you can abuse this. Wrapper in our terminology is just anything you, uh, you use to execute the, uh, the program under the test. So let's say your, your uh, test script executes 10, 10 programs. You can by name, uh, by status notation, specify which of them are you interested in. And you say, okay, instead of just running this command, run some command and this command as an argument, with all the arguments again. Uh, the original idea is to run, for example, perf or strace. You saw this at Lucas's presentation. Uh, I say, okay, let's be more, more practical. Let, let's do some fun with it. And 
Let's say you have this, uh, this nice test, test suite, which is very similar to, for example, KVM unit tests, uh, if, if I'm not like, conf say, like tell me if, if I'm wrong, but I remember that it, it uses something like this. It just prints the results and finishes with zero. And you have no idea what happens. So when I run this inside Avocado, I get passed because it passed the binary. So let me just do the same, but now run it inside the wrapper. You can see that I used minus minus wrapper and uh, use this file, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, and use it on every command you ex uh, which uh, fits into this, uh, this notation. So anything which is called test suite sh with something ahead of it is gonna be uh, executed like this wrapper and then, then this. So let me show you the file. What it does? It does something which is, which is, which is not yet upstream, but uh, probably going to be something similar in future. In, in. OK. Yeah, the blue, blue text is, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's not visible back. It, I, I'm, I'm glad it's not visible. No, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can switch it. Uh, let me just So is it better? Oh, you don't. You can't tell, right? Uh, where am I? Okay. So we were a developer. Is it better? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you can see it's just a simple wrapper. Uh, without this, uh, this uh, source uh, avocado bash, it would work to just, uh, I improved uh, uh, the logging mechanism. I, I used the logging mechanism in bash. Uh, so what it does, it just executes what you, what you give it and redirects the output, reads it line by line, and looks at the beginning of the line. And if there is a worm, it logs it into the worm. When there is a file, it, it logs it as fail, as an error. And also remembers that, that something was, uh, was not, uh, didn't finish as expected. And uh, if anything else happens, I want still to have it logged, so uh, just put it into the avocado info log. Yes, sometimes you have a, a suite that doesn't behave well. So yes. We Like it's, it's bash, you can do whatever you want. And the basic idea behind it, for example, now let's say it's not failing. Oh. But it can also finish with worm, which is not visible on white, right? <laughs> So that's about uh, uh, about it about wrappers. You can wrap anything uh, in uh, in avocado, which is including, for example, the make uh, make you do uh, inside the test. Uh, another core feature is multiplex <coughs> multiplexer. Uh, again, that's the idea idea behind it. Uh, you have a test, you want to parameterize it. That's like the most more common uh, thing in, in QA. Uh, there are lots of implementations. So I have n variable test. Uh, let me just sh show you the log. Or oh, maybe just like that. Uh, you can see that there, the, this test, what it does, it just prints a couple of variables. And one of them is custom variable. And it's none, as you'd expect. <coughs> Now let me 
specify there a YAML file, and you can see the little I edit is minus M or minus minus multiplex examples, tests, and variables, blah, 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 and variables YAML, and it executes three variants. Those three variants are, are defined here. This is the simplest thing which, which you can find. You just specify there is a short version of the test, long version of the test, and medium version of the test, and it changes the variables. Uh, we can talk later about the multiplexer. I have a special part, in, uh, special part about it. It's quite nice. And uh, you probably know, for example, in Jenkins, metrics te matrix test or sparse metrics. This is far more uh, marginal. This is more, uh, more powerful. Because instead of just creating metrics, we create a tree. And you can multiplex leaves. You can join some, uh, some nodes together. Uh, like it was very important for us to have something uh, something very powerful because sparse metrics does does not fit our scenarios because primarily we we are oh, or we origin origin from Vertes which uses lots of different uh, variants where some of the variants coll uh, collide to, or clash so we need to have it readable and not end up with with just one huge matrix and lots of filter only filter out. We can do it, like you can see, you can see later. Uh, this feature was, was inspired into something that we developed for virtualization tests that are based on uh, one of the tests. Uh, in virtualization testing, you were frequently uh, wanting to, to, to perform the exact same test under a number of circumstances, such as uh, different guest operating systems. So I want the same test to be executed in Fedora and that by just specifying this very compact representation of the test matrix, and that's that's the idea. Uh, to this day, we, we have guys in the uh, liver uh, QA testing team that they have uh, large test matrices that, that generate like uh, 2,000 tests, and they execute all the tests. Uh, it's actually more than 2,000. I remember a, a guy that executed like 4,000 tests every weekend on liver and reported the results. So that's the inspiration of it. It's basically a way to <coughs> represent your matrix in a very compact way. Yeah. As I said, if you're interested, there is a section about it uh, in the advanced advanced part. This is just the introduction. <coughs> and Grepsis info. Uh, this is uh, a feature Lucas also told about uh, in, in the presentation. Before every test runs and after it it runs, we we grab some results. The minus minus open browser is, is just uh, just a way to show you the HTML output, which is visible only when you have PyStash installed. And uh, you can see there there is a job results, and I, I have sysinfo, I have pre version of sysinfo, and I have I have post version of sysinfo. Uh, these are very helpful when you well when everything works fine. You you just don't check this never. You never check this. You you just have it there. But uh, after a month, half a year of test execution, it starts failing. So what do you do? Uh, right now, you just have to go there and see it yourself. We plan to, in the future to create some additional tools which would uh, compare these differences and say, okay, uh, yeah, the tests start failing and you may blame this, this or this because this changed and... Uh, it may be the source of the problem, or it may be just that, that the test changed or, or whatever, but uh, it can help you identify the problem uh, without the need to really like remembering what, what was there like one, one year ago. So, is this somehow customizable? Yes. Uh, that, that's the point. It's pluginable, customizable, and uh, this is even configurable right now, right? Yeah. Yes, and that's, I think, it for, for the basic part. Uh, I hope that uh, those who are interested already executed at least the run. Yes? Anybody? Yeah? Did this succeed? Uh, so now I, I want to offer you like these topics which, which are not visible. 
So let me just introduce them. We can either talk about Jenkins, uh, how to integrate Avocado with it, uh, just briefly or, or more advancedly, like whatever you want. We can talk about the API we created in like the library, like Avocado as a library in Python. Uh, like, let me know that uh, the first first point is very important. You are not forced to use Avocado Runner if you don't want to. You can just use our tools. You can just write your test and and uh, just like unit yes, not it's similar to unit test. Yeah. You can just use them as own tests. Yeah. Forget to mention uh, that that the part I, I like about Avocado is that uh, it's not forcing you to use all of it and all the time. You can only use some parts which you like and uh, pipe it to, to whatever you, you use. We can, uh, we can talk about how to see, like seamlessly just say, okay, now I executed it on my machine, but it, it usually breaks kernel and I don't want to do that. So you just say, okay, minus minus run it on a remote machine or run it on VM. This also contains a buzzword Docker, <laughs> which is also popular in, in here. Uh, we don't have support for for Docker. Yes. Like the VM, VM contains cleanup, basically. Right now it can start the machine and it can uh, store the snapshot and uh, re revert uh, at the test end. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like we can talk about this this uh, when, when you're interested in this topic. I, I will just introduce all, all the topics. But yes, remote VM are very similar. Uh, VM is actually inherited from remote, uh, and it just adds some some layer bit before to start the machine or to take a snapshot if you're interested. And the buzzword Docker is here for uh, for you. If, if you're interested, we can write a Docker plugin, which would uh, again do something very similar. Uh, another topic which I can show you is uh, is a GDB. Uh, like, like, uh, let me clarify: uh, the remote and GDB I'm talking right uh, right now about is the support probably for uh, for the developers. Uh, they want to run the same steps. For example, you have a heavy load. You have uh, uh, some have some steps to do setups. You have some steps to uh, I don't know interact with, with for example the device, and at certain point it fails. So instead of creating a simple reproducer, which is sometimes impossible, uh, you just hand over to to developer. Okay, run this test. He runs it, but then he he wants to see the GDB. So he just says, okay, run it again, but now minus minus GDB. 
and uh, you can specify breakpoints uh, over here with the double quote, uh, no, double, uh, with colon, yes, I have to learn it, with colon and you can, uh, you can uh, have a look. I have some advanced, uh, advanced uh, things like you can specify multiple breakpoints, you can specify whatever, whatever you want, uh, you can play with it, you can use DDD. And the most important level, which is like cool to me, it like uh, it executes it, and you can really just ex execute a command, and you're in, in GDB, and then it resumes, and it just continues uh, ex in the execution. Uh, like in the future, you may even, for example, run this in a test grid, and it it could notify you via email that okay, this test, like it it can run for for months. And uh, it can work, you know, all, this, all the time. It can, it, it can say, okay, it passed, it passed, it passed. But for example, after half a year of execution, the test reaches the point uh, where you, where you have specified the breakpoints. For example, like this should never occur, breakpoint, and it occurs. So instead of uh, having uh, having to wait another half a year before this re reoccurs again, you can run it inside the GDB all the time. You can have production and GDB version. And when this occurs, it can mail you. You can just SSH to the raw machine and say, okay, now, and I see, see the GDB session. So it, it's really transparent. Then I have advanced GDB section, which is about something completely different. It's about GDB. And it's about our API to interact with GDB. So this is more for the tester or for the, for the QA uh, to write a test and say, okay, uh, now set this breakpoint, okay, when the, when the load is this, inject this data into there, or when there's this register is in this position, okay, inject this data there, or, or whatever you want, you can automate this. Uh, you don't have to uh, connect to some sockets to do that, you can use just our API. Uh, another thing we can talk about are the wrappers. We can use Valgrind, we can use Trace and, and other custom wrappers. We can write uh, whatever you, you can imagine. Uh, if you're in, in the sort of people who likes to come to uh, a bar and say, okay, I, I want minus one beer, uh, then we can look at multiplexer. I have like crazy setups here, prepared like uh, hundreds of variants, uh, and I have the features which are different. I, I like. Let me say, uh, I never seen something such powerful as was Virtus before, and Avocado implemented it in in a slightly different way, which is even more effective. So, this would be interesting topic for me, as you can uh, expect from my excitement. Uh, another topic here is Eclipse. It's not actually part of Avocado, of course, uh, but uh, I can just show you what, what helps me to develop our develop tests or what helps me to understand actually what's executed. So we can use it, remote debugging on, on, for example, someone of you can run the test and I can, I can see what's happening there. I can, I can uh, remotely debug it. Uh, it's inside the Eclipse, this support. And if you use Avocado, you probably will use Python so you can use it too. Alternatively, we can have a look, for example, how Avocado works, and we can, you know, step by step see how the execution works, and you can have some recommendation for us, for example, or you can learn from how, how we did it. Another point is install Avocado. We, we won't like do, we won't be doing this because it's it's just boring. We, we're gonna use Git sources, right? Uh, anyway, it's already in uh, well, how is it called? Brew uh, Copper in Copper for, for uh, Fedora, and there are packages for Debian also there. Yeah, sure. And last thing is finally about this workshop's metadata, it's about Vert, and like I would call that Right now, uh, Avocado Vert is a plugin, and for right now I, I would like to call it just uh, just a demonstration about the flexibility of Avocado. Uh, currently, it just can like boot a VM. Uh, like the, Avocado Vert is not about the remote plugin. 
This is really about the testing of, uh, of virtualization. Uh, like our, our intentions are to uh, support, to create the tests once and run it on different backends like QMU, libvirt, uh, the same way as, uh, as for example, Virtus did before. Uh, but we want to do it better uh, because it, it was kind of tied to x86, so we want to be more flexible using different different hardware and also maybe different uh, different hypervisor, for example, again, the Docker. It, it's quite popular, so why not to support it seamlessly with, uh, with all the other tests we, we have? Uh, so we can have a look there. And again, we, we add some, some additional features for, for developers uh, there too. So we want to really encourage them to, to use Avocado too. So that's, that's already po main points we can, we can pursue it now. So which would interest you the most? So would you be interested in something in particular or, or should I just choose randomly or by my means? Remote machine is interesting group. Okay, so remote machine uh, and you mean, so, so just let me just show you what, what, it, what it means. So Uh, yeah, it was just the uh, just the motivation for for the remote test. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. for example. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> sure. Okay, uh, I forgot to say that I have some t-shirts for those who, who are most active, so probably you can get one <laughs> already. Uh, but still, uh, whoever finds the biggest bug uh, wins the avocado, right? Uh, so, uh, remote plugin. I don't think this is like for, for the QE, in that interesting for the QE. Maybe just for the plugin development or for the test development, but this is something which is interesting to to the developers because they, for example, receive this. Okay, I have a problem here. It crashes my kernel, and you just want to see what's happened there. You don't want to execute the binary on, on your computer, so instead of just set up all the environment and doing this stuff, you just uh, say, okay, Avocado, do this. And in the, in the end of the day, you can just submit this data, for example, to your, to your uh, central storage and, and share this with, with some bugzilla or, or whatever you use. Uh, so let me find the topic in here. Yes. I hope my, my remote machine is still, yeah, it's still working. So you can see I just 
past, uh, past here just the avocado past test, which is the same as before. But now I specify remote host name and remote user and remote password, which is pretty safe. Mm -hmm. And That's yes, and it's actually a virtual machine on my computer. Yes, and you can see the results. So what, what, what's changed? You can see that the test ID is different because it's, it's probably in a, in a different location. No, it, it works, don't worry. And, yeah, what, what do I want? Yes, okay, and the sysinf, okay, the sysinfo is here. So, so let me show you the sysinfo. Uh, for example, so which, the host name. You can see it's our test, and we, before when you when, when you have a look at this this one, host name it's T530. So it's clearly not my machine, so it was executed somewhere else. Uh, the thing how how it works is it connects to the machine, it copies the test directories. We use the directories because usually you can have uh, you can have libraries there. Uh, because we're not executing just the test, we are we, able to execute whatever you want. So we copy just uh, just uh, everything which is which is there, uh, stores it into a safe location, so we don't have any clashes, and run uh, run the results. We use a JSON output to uh, to be able to res uh, get the results uh, in a uh, machine readable way. And then we parse it and uh, return it to you in a in a beautiful way you you choose. So I, I can, for example, run the remote host and and then say, okay, give it to, to me in JSON and uh, and feed this to to Jenkins, for example. Yes. So what if I'm not executing anything from inside this directory but from somewhere else? Yeah, sure. Like, uh, what, what do you want to execute, for example? Asking 